What's good gamers, Aquilon here, and of course, welcome back to each and every one of you. We have to talk about Ysera. There's a lot that happened with Ysera, and it's been a minute since we've spoken about it. Admittedly, it's been a long time since something happened with Ysera, but since it's uh, kind of 10.2 Emerald Dream, Ysera seems to be pertinent right now. There's definitely some things that we need to discuss, and there's a lot of speculation that can be made from this. So, a very quick recap for those of you that don't quite remember how we got to where we are now. Ysera in Legion during the Valshara questline dies at the hands of Xavius. Of course, Malfurion is the one that should have died. That's who Xavius really wanted to kill, but Ysera wanted to save him, and instead, she gets turned into a nightmare dragon. She then dies after we kill her with the help of Tyrande. She goes to Ardenweald. We help the Winter Queen and the Ardenweald folk to resurrect or at least wake Ysera and now Ysera is a dragon within Ardenweald. There's a whole thing with the Winter Queen being very angry at Elune and therefore wanting to take it out on Ysera but that is all resolved. We then get back to Azeroth, go to the Dragon Isles and here we learn we are going to re-establish all of the aspects. All of the aspects are present, or at least there are replacements for all of the aspects, except for the green dragons. Their aspect is still in Ardenweald. So we do what everyone should do. We go to Ardenweald, we talk to the Winter Queen, and say, hey, bro, would you mind giving us your Sarah back? The Winter Queen's like, no, nah, fam, I'm not doing that. You need to up the ante. She's worth a lot. What are you going to give me in return? There's another green dragon. He's very suicidal. He goes, yeah, I'll take her place. I don't want to live anymore anyways. The Winter Queen's like, no, nah, fam. I don't want suicidal people in my in my grove. Actually, that's not what she says. The Winter Queen says, no, you don't belong here. This begs the question, where do green dragons actually belong, if not in Ardenweald? Ardenweald connected to the dream, green dragons connected to the dream. It's kind of weird, but we don't know. He's just not welcome there. The Winter Queen wants none of that. So eventually it turns out Malfurion is what the Winter Queen was after in the first place, because apparently something to do with fate. Malfurion had to die that day, but he didn't die. So now he has to take her place. Once we get out, we're all very happy. Malfurion is going to sleep for a little bit in Ardenweald. That's not new to him. He does that all the time in Azeroth anyways. And of course, Ysera is coming back to sleep on Azeroth and be inside the dream. Only... There's a bit of fine print that Ysera, of course, does not inform us of uh, before we make the decision. She informs us that, hey, I can't be the Aspect anymore. Information that would have been very fucking helpful five minutes ago before we exchange her for Malfurion. But never mind. We'll just accept that. Ysera is not the Aspect. She's been touched by death. She can no longer do it. But Marithra, her daughter, who could have been the Aspect even without Ysera out of Ardenweald, she can absolutely be the aspect. That whole convoluted story makes no sense, but we are going to talk about that because I'm not actually trying to be sarcastic here. It's just, it's how the lore is at the minute. It's very difficult to understand why Ysera had to leave Ardenweald, and that is part of this video. That's part of what I want to discuss. Because since Ysera came out of Ardenweald, She's done absolutely nothing. There is no reason for Ysera to have been there, except for kind of guiding Marithra in becoming a an aspect, or at least becoming the aspect until she gets all of her aspectral powers. But any of the dragon aspects could have guided Marithra through that. So it's not necessarily something that only Ysera could have done. More importantly, and perhaps far more interesting than that, is the whole line about being touched by death, and that somehow being touched by death means that she can no longer be the aspect. I want to know what the hell that means. Like, what do you mean you're touched by death? The Dream and Ardenweald, they're connected to each other. So technically speaking, it should not have an impact, and yet it does. Now, I would go so far, and this is a little bit of speculation, it's not that Ysera was touched by death that sort of excludes her from being the aspect, but more that she's been touched by Elune. Something that Elune has planned for her means that Ysera cannot become the aspect. And this leads me to believe that Ysera may actually now be Elune's aspect. This would call into question exactly what hand Ysera had or Elune had in the creation of the aspect in the first place, and specifically with the creation of the dream. And then of course, what role would Ysera play in 10.2? Now, the story is always encrypted, so we don't actually know what the full story in, uh, in, in the Emerald Dream is going to be. There is, however, some things that lead me to believe that Ysera will play a role. For one, it's the Emerald Dream. It's where Ysera has spent most of her life protecting the Emerald Dream. Two, Ardenweald is represented within the dream. All those fairies, they're there. 
They're there to help save the dream. Ysera being touched by death, connected to death, was an odd and wheel. This suggests that Ysera is going to play a role. To what extent that role could be, I don't know. Personally, I think Ilun is finally ready to make her move. And if I'm correct, and the Titans did indeed play a, a lot of hide the footsie and imprison uh, our op opponents, Ilun herself may actually be a prisoner of the Titans. The Titans are very tight-lipped about Ilun. They mention her a few times in the Chronicles, but every single time so fucking vaguely that it's barely uh, it's, it's barely possible to really examine who Elune is from their mentions, which is kind of weird considering that they met Elune on Azeroth and Elune had a major hand in at least, from what we understand, the creation of the Emerald Dream. And then the, uh, the Titans basically just don't explain who she is, but they do explain in painful detail everything else on Azeroth, except, of course, for what exactly they were doing here. I still believe that this expansion is going in the direction of us realizing that the Titans are not our friends and that Ysera's role in all of this is probably going to play some major part. What I will say, though, and this is maybe, it's not necessarily on the negative side of things, but it is a small gripe that I have, is just how long uh, Yasera's story have been kept on ice. Something this big, we lost Malfurion, and let's be real, the only reason we lost Malfurion in this expansion is because Blizzard have never been able to figure out what they want to actually do with Malfurion. He is so powerful that you can't really include him in any of the storylines without severely diminishing his power, because he could basically take on almost anyone, so they've just removed him, and this almost feels like it's a cheap way of removing him, because you remove him, you bring back Ysera for a specific reason, to make her the Aspect, but then she can't be the Aspect, and you don't explain at all why she can't be the Aspect other than touched by death. It's not much of an explanation. Now many of you might say, but Akulon, her story is coming, you just said, 10.2, but that's exactly part of the problem. There's no way that Blizzard will be able to do justice to that story and all of the intricacies that that story arguably and undoubtedly will bring with it in a single patch. There's just no way, because the story is going to be about Farak invading the Emerald Dream, and Ysera's story is most likely going to be a side quest on that main storyline. It's just going to slot into it. It would have been much better if every single patch this expansion so far, we got a little bit of story about Ysera. Even if it's not completely revealing what Ysera is doing and who Ysera is now connected to and why she couldn't be the Aspect, it would have been nice to get small little stories that, that sort of unpack it. So by the time we get to the 10.2 grand finale, where we're going to take on Farak and Ysera is going to be there to help us, we at least have some idea of what Ysera went through, why Ysera is back, and what Ysera is looking to do here. I'm afraid, I think I'm scared a bit more, that it's going to be another one of those stories that by the end of it, I don't quite understand what the hell we're doing here. I don't quite understand where the story is slotting in, and if the story even makes sense, because they're not leaving themselves enough time to really tell the story. Of course, they could always do a complete 180 and just not have Ysera in the storyline at all because she's connected to death. She couldn't give two shits about the dream now. She's off doing, you know, whatever the hell death aspects do or Elune's aspects do. Who knows, right? It might be a story that's left for another day. Again, that would be part of the problem. It, it sort of, it goes back to the sword problem that we have and many of you might go, what sword? Thank you for the comment, by the way. But yeah, it might go back to that, where we should have had a lot more development around the sword, small little, little developments, every other patch or every third patch or so, that just takes us back and says, hey, we haven't forgotten about this sword. There's stuff that's being developed. We are going to do something with the sword. Here's another few quests that just sort of explain how we're struggling to figure out how to remove the sword or whatever. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do to at least keep the story relevant and make sure the people don't think, hey, they've just forgotten about the story. Because the sword is another big problem where you just know it's going to turn out just as nothing. Blizzard is absolutely not going to do anything with that sword that is worth the, the wait, right? Because there's not going to be enough time. So it's basically going to be some kind of Deuce X uh, scenario, which is really disappointing, especially if it's with the Ysera one, because 
Ysera is a cool fucking dragon, right? Uh, there's a cool storyline there, and I really want that storyline explored. But never mind. What do you think is going to happen with Ysera? What's her story? Who is she? Who is she serving now? And why could she not be the Aspect? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe over on Patreon. That's where you help me keep this channel free from sponsorships. One dollar a month, all I ask. As always, peace out.